Song again. Born in Wallington, Surrey, on June 24, 1944, Jeff Beck grew up in a musical household with his parents, Arnold and Ethel, and his sister, Annetta. At a young age, he sang in church choir and developed a fascination with music. Beck's early exposure to electric guitar came at the age of six when he heard Les Paul play How High the Moon, igniting his passion for the instrument. Les Paul's mastery left a lasting impression on Beck. He was also influenced by other guitar greats, such as Cliff Gallup, B.B. King, and Steve Cropper. He also held a special admiration for Lonnie Mack, whom he felt was a significant yet underappreciated figure in the guitar world. During his teenage years, Beck's resourcefulness shone through as he attempted to create his own guitar. He ingeniously used cigar boxes for the body and a rough fence post for the neck, displaying early signs of the innovative approach that would later define his career. After his schooling, which included time at Sutton Manor and Sutton East County Secondary Modern Schools, Beck pursued art at the Wimbledon School of Art. He took on various jobs, including painter and decorator, golf course groundsman, and car paint sprayer. It was during this time that his sister introduced him to fellow musician Jimmy Page, marking the beginning of a significant connection to the music world. During his time at Wimbledon College of Art, Jeff Beck was part of various bands, notably joining Screaming Lord Such and the Savages in 1964. This period saw them record tracks like Dracula's Daughter and Come On Baby for Oriole Records. Beck's musical journey took a turn towards rhythm and blues in 1963 after meeting Ian Stewart from the Rolling Stones, who introduced him to the genre. Embracing R&B, he established the Night Shift and became a figure at the famed 100 Club on Oxford Street. His stint with the Rumbles, a Croydon-based band, showcased his skill in emulating the guitar styles of icons like Gene Vincent and Buddy Holly. The same year, Beck found his groove with the Tridents, a band from Chaswick, drawn to their authentic R&B sound, reminiscent of Jimmy Reed. He thrived on energizing the classic 12-bar blues format, but with a rockier edge. Additionally, Beck's prowess as a guitarist was recognized in his work as a session musician. In 1964, he contributed to the Parlophone single, I'm Not Running Away, by Fits and Starts, which also featured the B-side, So Sweet. In the spring of 1965, Jeff Beck was invited to join the Yardbirds, filling the void left by Eric Clapton and coming highly recommended by Jimmy Page, who had initially been the preferred choice. Everybody says, who's the best guitar player? This is what cinched it for me. Jeff Beck, they're playing the song. He holds his guitar like this and it's feeding back. And he's talking to somebody. He's like 19 years old. And while he's talking, he's dropping the guitar and doing triplets. Oh my goodness. Perfect triplets and catches it right on the last note where it's feeding back. And we went, what? That's impossible. That's why when people say, who's the best guitar player? I go, Jeff Beck. If anybody asks you, go see, if you get a chance to see Jeff Beck, Jeff Beck's the guy. When Beck received an invitation to join the Yardbirds, his initial reaction was basically that they could take a hike. His first encounter with his future bandmates didn't impress him either. According to him, they didn't say hi or anything. They were pissed off that Eric had left. They thought that the whole Yardbird sound had gone. That was the impression Jeff got. When asked if he could play the blues, Beck's response was, what, slow blues, Chicago blues? They needed any blues that he could play, so he improvised. However, they quickly told him, get rid of the echo. You don't use an echo in Chicago blues. <laughs> Beck embraced riffs filled with fuzz tone, distortion, feedback, and reverb. Jeff's 20-month stint with the band was intense and productive, contributing to the majority of their hit songs and resulting in the creation of the album Roger the Engineer, a known stateside as Over, Under, Sideways, Down, released in 1966. That May, Beck laid down the tracks for the instrumental Beck's Bolero, with an ensemble including Jimmy Page on the 12-string rhythm guitar, Keith Moon on drums, John Paul Jones on bass, and Nicky Hopkins on the piano. In June of the same year, Page expanded his role in the Yardbirds from bassist to dual lead guitar alongside Beck, a collaboration that was immortalized on the film Stroll On, a rework of Train Kepa Roland from Michelangelo Antonini's movie Blow Up. 
However, Beck's time with the Yardbirds was marred by his inconsistent appearances and volatile stage presence, leading to his dismissal during a U.S. tour. In the aftermath, 1967 saw Beck releasing solo singles like Hi-Ho Silver Lining and Tally Man, where he also lent his voice under the guidance of pop producer Mickey Most. The same year, he formed the Jeff Beck Group, enlisting the talents of Rod Stewart on vocals, Ronnie Wood on bass, and Nicky Hopkins on piano, with Ainsley Dunbar on drums, and subsequently Mickey Waller. This ensemble produced two acclaimed albums under Columbia Records, Truth in August of 1968, and Beck Ola in July of 1969. Truth made waves, featuring the song You Shook Me, written by Willie Dixon and previously performed by Muddy Waters, as well as Led Zeppelin. On their debut album, Led Zeppelin 1, it achieved a remarkable 15th position on the charts. Despite positive reception, Beck Ola didn't achieve similar commercial or critical success, and internal tensions led to the group's breaking up in July of 1969. During this tumultuous period, Pink Floyd considered Beck as a potential replacement for Sid Barrett in 1967, but ultimately no invitation was extended. In 1969, after Brian Jones's passing, the Rolling Stones also contemplated bringing Beck into their fold. Following the breakup of his group, Jeff joined Music from Free Creek Project, contributing to four tracks under the pseudonym A and Other, one of which he co-authored. He planned a collaboration with Vanilla Fudge's Rhythm Section, Tim Bogert, and Carmen Apice in September of 1969. In December of 1969, Beck made the decision not to join the Rolling Stones, a choice followed by a car accident that nearly derailed his career. He sustained several injuries in the accident, including a skull fracture that necessitated a hiatus from music exceeding a year to allow for full recovery. Despite his inclination to understate significant events in his life, Beck found a silver lining in the accident. He reflected on the ordeal in his book, Beck 01 Hot Rods and Rock and Roll, acknowledging that while the crash forced him to step away from music temporarily, it ultimately led to the formation of the second Jeff Beck group. However, the accident inflicted serious damage with Beck noting, at this point, I'd had a bash to the head and a fractured skull. I couldn't stand loud noises at all, let alone the thought of cymbals crashing around. This sensitivity to sound marked a significant enduring impact of the accident on his life and career. Once Jeff Beck recuperated in 1970, he embarked on the formation of a new musical ensemble with drummer Cozy Powell. The duo, along with producer Mickey Most, ventured to the U.S. to lay down tracks at Motown's iconic Studio A in Hitsville, USA, accompanied by the Funk Brothers. Despite the collaboration, the recordings from these sessions never surfaced. By April 1971, Beck had solidified his new band's lineup, welcoming guitarist and vocalist Bobby Tench, keyboardist Max Middleton, and bassist Clive Chamin. This reformed the Jeff Beck group distinguished itself with a sound that diverged markedly from its original formation. Their first album, Rough and Ready, released in October 1971, showcased Beck's songwriting skills, with him either writing or co-writing six of the album's seven tracks, the remaining one penned by Middleton. This record was a melting pot of genres, blending soul, rhythm and blues, and jazz. In July of 1972, the Jeff Beck Group released their second album, recorded at TMI Studios in Memphis, with the celebrated Steve Cropper taking on the role of producer. This album was imbued with a deep soul influence, marked by five tracks being renditions of songs by American artists, including I've Got to Have a Song, the first of four pieces composed by Stevie Wonder that Beck covered. The tales from rock history, particularly from the drug-addled 60s and 70s, can get pretty muddled. Among these stories is Jeff Beck's potential collaboration with Stevie Wonder on the latter album's Talking Book. After covering a Stevie Wonder track on their Orange album, Beck and Wonder contemplated having Beck contribute to Talking Book. In May of that year, Beck laid down some guitar tracks at Electric Lady Studios in New York. The entire Jeff Beck group later joined to possibly inspire a song from Wonder for their upcoming album. While stories vary, a common thread is Beck's initial drum pattern to spark creativity, though it was not this rhythm that ultimately led to the song's creation. Max Middleton recounts, according to Martin Powers' biography, Hotwire Guitar, The Life of Jeff Beck, a more probable series of events. Beck asked Wonder to play something funky, leading to a moment where the rest of the band left the studio, save for Middleton. Sitting beside Stevie Wonder, he witnessed the inception of a riff that would evolve into superstition. Wonder single-handedly crafted the song, adding lyrics with each take. Upon their return the next day, the song was complete. 
Despite the band's initial excitement, Wonder recognized the potential hit he had on his hands, resulting in Beck never claiming superstition for his album. The song would go on to reach number one in the U.S. charts and sell over a million copies as a single. Ultimately, not long after the release of the Jeff Beck Group album, the band dissolved. Beck's management announced that while the blend of the members' musical talents had been individually successful, it hadn't culminated in the formulation of a new and distinct musical style with the robustness that they had aimed for. A memorable collection occurred on July 3, 1973, when Beck joined David Bowie on stage for renditions of The Jean Genie, Love Me Do, and Around and Around. This performance was captured on film and later featured in the 2022 documentary Moonage Daydream about Bowie. In October, Beck recorded for Michael Fennelly's album Lane Changer. Early 1974 saw Beck, Bogart, and a piece performing at the Rainbow Theater in London as part of a European tour. The concert, later broadcasted on the U.S. show Rock Around the World, previewed material for a forthcoming studio album. Although the second album was never officially released, Recordings like Blues Deluxe and BBA Boogie from the concert found their way onto the 1991 Jeff Beck compilation, Beckology. Beck, Bogart, and a piece came to an end in April of 74, leaving behind an unfinished second studio album. However, their live performances from the 1973 tour in Japan were compiled into the album, Beck, Bogart, and a piece live in Japan, which eventually released in February of 1975, by Epic and Sony. Beck didn't remain idle for long. Within a few months, he collaborated with the band Up at Underhill Studio, producing their debut album and more discreetly their follow-up, This Way Up. His involvement in the second album went unacknowledged. Also in 74, Beck participated in the sessions for his initial album of Bobby Tench's band Hummingbird, though his contributions didn't make it into the final cut. In October that year, Beck initiated instrumental recording sessions at Air Studios with his associate from Hummingbird, Max Middleton on keys, alongside bassist Phil Chen and drummer Richard Bailey. Legendary producer George Martin orchestrated these sessions, which culminated in the creation of Beck's critically acclaimed jazz rock album, Blow by Blow, in March of 75. Known for his meticulous nature, Beck frequently revisited Air Studios to refine overdubs and solos until he deemed them perfect. Following the album's completion, Beck, eager to re-record a solo section, was humorously informed by Martin that the album was already on sale. For his 1975 US tour, Beck formed a live band, which debuted a low-key performance at the Newlands Tavern in Peckham, London. This tour, largely supporting the Mahavishnu Orchestra, featured Middleton on keyboards, Wilbur Bascombe on bass, and Bernard Pretty Purdy on drums, who also played with Hummingbird. A memorable incident during a May show in Cleveland where Beck, using an early model talk box on his rendition of She's a Woman by the Beatles, became so frustrated after snapping a string that he hurled his Yardbirds-era Fender Stratocaster offstage, along with the talk box, and finished the set with a Les Paul guitar. At Yoya Uchida's World Rock Festival, Beck performed a total of eight songs with Purdy and also participated in a jam session featuring Felix Papillardi of Mountain and Akira Joe Yanamaka from Flower Traveling Band, though only the performance with Purdy was captured and released. Following this, Beck returned to the studio to record Wired in 1976, collaborating with former Mahavishnu Orchestra drummer and composer Narda Michael Walden and keyboardist Jan Hammer. The album echoed jazz rock fusion stylings reminiscent of his collaborators' work. To promote Wired, Beck teamed up with the Jan Hammer Group for a concert supporting Alvin Lee at the Roadhouse in May of 76, which kicked off a seven-month-long world tour. This tour was immortalized in the live album Jeff Beck with the Jan Hammer Group Live, released in 1977. During a period as a tax exile, Jeff Beck took up residency in the U.S., staying until his move back to the U.K. in the fall of 77. By spring of the next year, he commenced rehearsals with former Return to Forever bassist Stanley Clark and drummer Jerry Brown in preparation for an appearance at the Nebworth Festival. However, plans for the festival fell through when Brown withdrew. Undeterred, Beck embarked on a three-week tour of Japan in November of 78, accompanied by an impromptu ensemble 
featuring Clark alongside Tony Hymas on keyboards and Simon Phillips on drums, both fresh from the Jack Bruce band. Following the tour, Beck set to work on a new studio project at the Who's Ramport Studios in London. The recording sessions, which took place intermittently throughout 1979, culminated in the album There and Back, released in June of 1980. The album boasted three tracks that Beck co-composed and recorded with Jan Hammer and an additional five tracks co-written with Hymas. For this album and the tours that followed, Mo Foster was brought in to replace Stanley Clark on the bass. The release of There and Back led to extensive touring across the US, Japan, and the UK. In 1981, Jeff Beck made a series of historic live appearances with Eric Clapton, starting with their first stage collaboration in the UK since 1974. This marked a significant return for Beck, as he was welcomed warmly at the Hammersmith Odeon on March 9th and 10th, right after his critically acclaimed Blow by Blow and riding the success of There and Back. The British audience's enthusiastic reception was a reaffirming moment for Beck, dispelling any notion that he had lost touch with his home country's public. These shows, alongside his band, were met with vigorous applause, eclipsing even their earlier performances in Japan. On the second night, March 10th, the audience witnessed a momentous reunion, Jimmy Page wielding a Les Paul, joined by Beck on stage for a rendition of Going Down. It was a significant moment for both musicians, their first time sharing a stage since 1967. For Page, it marked a return to the public eye following a period of mourning for the late John Bonham, leading to the disillusion of Led Zeppelin. This performance wasn't just a musical collaboration, but also a personal catharsis for Page and heralding new beginnings. However, despite the prospect of further success and touring opportunities, Beck unexpectedly stepped away from the limelight once more, retreating to his garage to indulge in his passion for hot rods. During the Amnesty International sponsored benefit concerts known as the Secret Policeman's Other Ball Shows, Beck joined Clapton on tracks like Crossroads and Further Up the Road, as well as on his own rendition of Stevie Wonder's Because We Ended as Lovers. Beck also took part in the all-star band finale, performing I Shall Be Released, alongside an ensemble of music legends including Clapton, Sting, Phil Collins, and Donovan. The success of these performances resonated well into 1982, captured in both an album and film that garnered worldwide acclaim. In addition, Beck participated in the ARMS concert for MS, jamming out classics like Tulsa Time and Layla with Clapton and Page. In 1985, Beck released the album Flash, notable for its variety of vocal contributions, especially the presence of his former bandmate Rod Stewart, who provided vocals on the Curtis Mayfield classic People Get Ready. This cover rose very quickly to popularity, becoming a huge hit single and featuring in a music video that saw heavy rotation on MTV. Despite the album's commercial success, Beck later reflected on Flash with less fondness, describing it as a sad time and labeling the work as a regrettable product of its era, characterized by an 80s dance sound. His critique extended to the era's aesthetic, with Beck notably gracing the album's cover in attire he later made fun of. Although the album featured the talents of Stewart and drummer Carmen Apice, the one track that did earn Beck his first Grammy Award, he was critical of the Grammys, suggesting he would just become a marketing gimmick by this time. During the period following Flash, Beck and Stewart performed together on a few occasions, but plans for a comprehensive tour failed to ever come to fruition. In 92, during Rod Stewart's induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Beck humorously commented on their complex relationship, joking, we have a love-hate relationship. He loves me and I hate him. Beck also made appearances with other artists, including a cameo on the 1988 film Twins, where he played alongside singer Nicolette Larson. Following a hiatus from recording, Beck returned in 89 with Jeff Beck's Guitar Shop. This album was a significant one for showcasing Beck's shift to fingerstyle guitar, a departure from his traditional pick-oriented technique. It was his third album release of the 80s, a decade in which most of his output was notably limited. Beck attributed this reduction in activity partly to his struggle with tinnitus, a condition that affected his hearing and ability to record music. Throughout the 90s, Beck's musical contributions were prolific. He played the lead solo on John Bon Jovi's Blaze of Glory, for the Young Guns 2 soundtrack. In 90, and was featured on Hans Zimmer's soundtrack for Days of Thunder. Beck provided his guitar expertise on Roger Waters' Amused to Death and contributed to Kate Bush's The Red Shoes and Beverly Craven's Love Scenes in 93. 
The same year, he honored the 1950s rockabilly sound with Crazy Legs, a tribute to Gene Vincent and the Blue Caps and their guitarist Cliff Gallup. Beck's rehearsal with Guns N' Roses in 92 was marred by an unfortunate incident where Matt Sorum's cymbal crash actually caused Jeff Beck temporary hearing loss, preventing him from performing at their Paris concert. Repercussions from the skull fracture he endured back in 69 may have also played a part, since he couldn't stand loud noises ever since that accident. Nevertheless, that year, upon the Yardbirds' induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Beck gave his acceptance speech and had the place totally in stitches when he said someone told me i should be proud tonight but i'm not because they kicked me out they did fuck them he joined forces with paul rogers on muddy water blues then breaking new ground beck ventured into guitar-based electronica with who else in 1999 where he collaborated with jennifer batten marking his first time with another guitar player since his days with the yardbirds Beck and Batten continued their collaboration with the tour following his 2001 album, You Had It Coming. This period saw Beck receiving his third Grammy Award for Best Rock Instrumental, with the track Dirty Mind from You Had It Coming and his fourth Grammy for the song Plan B from the 2000 release Jeff. The success of these tracks confirmed the staying power of his new electro guitar style. In the summer of 2003, Beck opened for B.B. King and in 2004 he performed at Eric Clapton's Crossroads Guitar Festival. That same year he contributed to the track 5646 Was My Number by Toots and the My Tals, included in the Grammy Award winning best reggae album True Love. In 2007, Jeff Beck delivered a memorable performance with Kelly Clarkson on American Idol during the Idol Gives Back show, where they covered Patty Griffin's Up to the Mountain. This live recording was quickly made available for purchase. Beck also returned to Clapton's Crossroads Guitar Festival, sharing the stage with Vinnie Colaiuta, Jason Robello, and the young bass prodigy Tal Wokenfeld. Early 2009 saw Beck announcing a global tour, maintaining his recent band lineup for two years prior, including a run at Ronnie Scott's in London to Full Houses. Beck led his guitar talents to the track Black Cloud from the Morrissey album, Years of Refusal, and that year Harvey Goldsmith took over managerial duties for Beck. Further cementing his legacy, Beck was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a solo artist on April 4, 2009, with Jimmy Page presenting the honor. At the ceremony, Beck jammed on Train Kepa Rollin' with a stellar group including Page, Ronnie Wood, Joe Perry, Flea, as well as members of Metallica. On July 4, 2009, David Gilmore joined Beck on stage at the Albert Hall, where the two icons exchanged solos on Jerusalem and wrapped up the show with Hi Ho Silver Lining. In April 2010, Jeff Beck released his album Emotion and Commotion, showcasing a blend of original pieces as well as reinterpreted classics. The album included renditions of Over the Rainbow, Puccini's Nessim Dora, and Benjamin Britten's Corpus Christi Carol, all delivered with Beck's distinctively expressive guitar work. Vocal talents on the album were bolstered by features from Joss Stone and Imelda May. The album garnered critical acclaim and won two Grammys in 2011. In the same year, Beck contributed to Imagine on Herbie Hancock's The Imagine Project, collaborating with artists like Seal, Pink, and others. This star-studded ensemble earned a Grammy for Best Pop Collaboration with Vocals. Jeff Beck embarked on a world tour in 2010 with a band featuring Grammy winner Narada Michael Walden on drums, Rhonda Smith on bass, and Jason Robello on keyboards. A live album from this tour, live and exclusive from the Grammy Museum, was released on October 25th, 2010. Additionally, on June 9th, 2010, Beck recorded a DVD, Rock and Roll Party, honoring Les Paul at the Iridium in New York City with Imelda May's band. The DVD captures a performance of various Les Paul songs, with May performing Mary Ford's vocal parts. 2011 was a year of accolades for Beck in the form of honorary degrees from two British universities. On July 18, 2011, he received a fellowship from the University of the Arts London, an acknowledgement for his outstanding contribution to the field of music. Shortly after, on July 21, 2011, the University of Sussex awarded him honorary doctorate, commending his remarkable music career. This degree also celebrated Beck's connection to the Brighton Institute of Modern Music, BIMM, highlighted by Sanjeev Bhaskar, the university's chancellor during the presentation. In 2013, Jeff Beck was announced to contribute to Brian Wilson's solo project alongside fellow Beach Boys Al Jardine and David Marks under Capitol Records. By June 20th, 
Speculation from Wilson's website suggested the collaboration could result in three distinct albums, a collection of new pop songs, an album featuring predominantly instrumental pieces with Beck, and a set of interwoven tracks referred to as The Suite. During the fall of 2013, Beck joined Wilson, Jardine, and Marks on the 18-date tour, expressing his profound respect for the opportunity to perform with Wilson. The year 2014 saw the release of the three-track CD title Yosagi on April 5th marking the start of Jeff Beck's world tour in Japan, despite the album not being fully finalized. In November that year, Beck performed with Joss Stone at the Royal British Legion's Festival of Remembrance, held at the Royal Albert Hall. Fast forward to 2016, Beck introduced Loud Hailer, an album celebrated for its straightforward rock essence and minimalistic production, focusing purely on guitar, vocals, bass, and drums. The album featured Carmen Vandenberg on guitar, David Salazi on drums, and Giovanni Pilati on bass, highlighting tracks like The Dark and Energetic Rocker, as covered on this channel a few videos back, Scared for the Children, and Shame, which revisits Beck's doo-wop inclinations. Oil, can't get enough of that sticky stuff, stands out for its infectious groove, with Rosie Bones delivering soulful vocals. Listeners can appreciate the nod to Beck's earlier work in Blow by Blow through the rhythm guitar lick on the track, demonstrating Beck's ability to intertwine his past influences with contemporary sounds. This period in Beck's career not only reinforced his status as a guitar legend, but also showcased his versatility and willingness to explore different musical landscapes while staying true to his roots. On April 16th, 2020, Beck unveiled a new single in collaboration with Johnny Depp, covering John Lennon's Isolation. This release marked the first public offering from their ongoing musical partnership. The two had been working together on music for a while, with the track having been produced the prior year. Beck shared that the timing of the release was heavily influenced by the pandemic lockdowns. He stated, We weren't expecting to release it so soon, but given all the hard days and true isolation that people were going through in these challenging times, we decided now would be the right time to let you all hear it. On June 2nd, 2022, Jeff and Johnny Depp appeared at the Sage in Gateshead. This performance came shortly after Depp's widely publicized legal victory in his defamation lawsuit against Amber Heard. Earlier that week, Beck and Depp had also taken the stage together at the Royal Albert Hall in London, signaling a strong partnership between both artists. The musical collaboration was further solidified with the announcement on June 10th, 2022, of their first single, This is a Song from Miss Hedy Lamar, from their album 18. In addition to his work with Depp, Jeff Beck played on two tracks on Ozzy's album, Patient No. 9, released on June 24, 2022. The tracks, including the title song and A Thousand Shades, showcased Jeff Beck's amazing phrasing and added a distinct layer to Ozzy's music. Beck's collaboration extended to other artists as well. On Dion DeMucci's 2020 album, Blues with Friends, Jeff played lead guitar on the track Can't Start Over Again, displaying his ability to cross into different genres while complementing the blues style of Demucci. The last recording Beck made before his passing was his involvement in a supergroup rendition of Going Home, theme of a local hero. This project was headed by Mark Knopfler from Dire Straits, and the recording was aimed at supporting the Teenage Cancer Trust and Teen Cancer America, highlighting Jeff Beck's commitment to using his musical for charitable causes. The final project capped off a career filled with notable collaborations and contributions to music across a wide array of genres. Jeff Beck passed away due to a bacterial meningitis infection at a hospital near River Hall on July 10th, 2023 at the age of 78. Immediately following the announcement of his passing, tributes from musicians and friends started pouring in. Jimmy Page lamented the loss of the six-string warrior, praising Beck for his ability to channel music from the ethereal with a unique technique and apparently limitless imagination. Mick Jagger offered his condolences, acknowledging Beck as a wonderful man and one of the greatest guitar players in the world, and expressed how much he would be missed. Ronnie Wood, who played alongside Beck, shared his grief over losing one of my band brothers, expressing how dearly Jeff Beck would be missed. His funeral was held at St. Mary's in Bennington Sutton on February 3rd. The service saw the attendance of notable figures such as Johnny Depp, Rod Stewart, Eric Clapton, Sir Tom Jones, Ronnie Wood, David Gilmore, Robert Plant, Chrissy Hine, 
and others. If there was ever somebody who made the guitar cool, it was Jeff. He brought swagger, some serious groove, playful phrasing, and all-out next-level musicianship to everything that he did. He never came across as trying to do anything. When he wasn't playing music, he was twisting wrenches on hot rods. Most importantly, so many in the music world wanted Jeff to play on their tracks or join them on stage. He was session player to the stars. People just liked to be around him, and they liked to have him around. And if that doesn't speak volumes to the type of player and person that he was, I don't know what does. So if you like what you see here, kindly smack that like button. And while you're at it, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well and join the family. Thank you so much for watching.